Eric will attend the University of Chicago with a major in biology on the pre-med track to become a psychiatrist. And now, Eric Sharu. Freshman, your bus crawls up to a cold penitentiary looking building. Hiding under your backpack, you shuffle in surrounded by fellow sheep as these obnoxious giants run around screaming and laughing. Like a child pushed off of the river's bank into deep, murky waters, you eventually start kicking and find your way to the surface. Sophomore, the building, once a nightmare, is now becoming your domain as a new flock of sheep starts stumbling in, and obviously you never acted like that and were never that annoying or immature. Later, your sweaty palms are clenched firmly at ten and two. Mr. Stanley gives you the side eye as you approach the stoplight at the bridge. You look straight into the lane, in front, the lane in front of you and remind yourself you have to pull into that lane and go into the right lane after that. You think. Later that day, you're backing out of your driveway by yourself for the first time with the sun beating down on your face and with your favorite song playing on the radio and your parents watching Bittersweet Reflection because they know this is the beginning. Junior. Well, the good news is your acne is starting to clear up, but who cares about that? Because you're sitting in Miss Lankis' office trying to register for the SATs and scrolling through your phone to find a decent selfie for your admission ticket. You keep telling yourself that all you have to do is force yourself through this critical year and you'll get to that mythical enigma, that sought-after escape known as senior year, but you aren't there yet. The current rulers of the school flaunt their fame right until the last day when they run out of the doors and you find yourself dealing with the uneasy feeling that the building that once horrified you is now yours for the taking. <laughs> Senior. It's a countdown of five, four, three, two, one, and you run through a banner with everybody that you've grown up with, with everybody that you played Tonka trucks with in kindergarten, with everybody that you gossiped about in middle school, and with everybody that you sat at a lunch table with wishing that you could just get out of this place. You're sitting on the train tracks, and the reality is coming straight at you faster and faster, but you don't care because you know you have these nine months of bliss and escape called senior year. You can call it by the echoing marching band drums from homecoming night by the spinning spotlights of a pep rally, by the crackling sparks that leap out of the kickoff nightfall on fire, by the chocolate syrup dripping off of Mr. Fischl's head in the teacher appreciation pep rally, by the rush of adrenaline you get when you see that it's calzone day, by the sounds of teachers <laughs> slamming their windows shut because you just had to yell at Hannah Fujini in the courtyard for doing something stupid, by remembering <laughs> that you had to tell Amy Sheasley happy birthday that day. By the way, happy birthday, Amy. <laughs> By the dissonant symphony of lockers opening and crashing between classes, and by the screams of kids going down slides and banging cars with sledgehammers at the spring festival, and another countdown, and another banner that set us free from this place forever, these markings, these calling cards of our awesome year. Some might say that they'll be weighed down by time. In all reality, these moments could be buried in a yearbook, only to be placed on a shelf and coated with dust, and then put in a box to eventually be thrown away. A few weeks ago, a woman who hasn't quite figured it out yet told me that in a few years, they won't remember our names and they won't remember our positions in the building. And because of that, we shouldn't be as attached to the memories that we've made this year. But I disagree. Yeah, time will go on and you may forget my name and I may forget yours. But just like Charlie said, these will all be stories someday. And that doesn't mean that we'll forget how this year made us feel. We won't forget how an undefeated football season, or a school filled with Christmas decorations, or a rap battle between a biology and a TV prod teacher, or raising almost $9,000 as a student body between various fundraising efforts for a boy with leukemia made us feel. We may forget the exact moments and we may forget the names, but time will not take away the unity and the wonder and awe that was the class of 2014 senior year, because time is trapped in cases and boxes, so what does it matter anyway? Time does, <coughs> however seem to have this jading effect on people. Adulthood seems to have this tendency to make people lose their senses of wonder because people forget what it was like to be a kid or a teenager when they become an adult. We're going to be old. We're going to forget things, but that doesn't mean we have to lose our senses of wonder. To hold on to your senses of wonder is my challenge for you all. If your favorite song comes on the radio, don't be afraid to embrace it. Don't take simple beauties like summer night stars or gut-busting laughter for granted. Don't let dandelions become weeds if you want them to stay flowers. Hold on to your senses of wonder and hold on to what the class of 2014 achieved. I like to think that history is a progression of mistakes. 
a series of accidents, successes, intentions, and failures made by those who could not listen to generations past simply because they could not hear them. We can only learn by doing. And even though they'll try to teach us how to be good parents, and they'll try to teach us how to succeed in college and adult life, and how to fall in love and stay in love, we can only learn these things from doing them. And once we have this collective knowledge, and once we have this experience, we can leave behind our own set of wise startup footprints for the next generation to follow, only so that they can completely disregard them and make history. And this is exactly what the class of 2014 did this year. We disregarded what high school was supposed to be like, and we disregarded what Catanning was and what it was used to, and we made it better. This is history, and this is the spirit of the 14s. Thank you, Eric. Our instrumental selection this evening